is taught. Hello everybody and welcome back to TipTart and welcome back to Intro to Adobe Animate 2018. This is the final episode. We've done really well. We've made this so far. This guy looks awesome. I'm really happy with him. Um, we're going to add now some frame by frame animation. Everything we have done so far has been done tweening. The computer has done most of the work. This is the fun bit where you can really let your creativity flare as we do everything by hand, frame by frame. You can follow along with a mouse, but for this bit, I'm actually going to be using my little Wacom tablet just so that I can draw things a little bit nicer. Um, let's add in a new layer then. And let's call this layer uh, a blob. <laughs> blob, like so. Okay. Now, so far, we've done this. We've drawn ourselves a little shape uh, in a color that everyone can see. <laughs> we've drawn ourselves a little shape, and then we've gone to another bit, and we've drawn ourselves another little shape, and then the computer has done the rest. We are now moving into the hardcore um, animations styles of things. Let's grab a nice light blue. And what I'm literally going to do is just draw some shapes do a keyframe, draw another shape, do another keyframe, draw another shape, do another keyframe. It's as simple as that. This is how they did it in the old school. And in my opinion, is the, the most fun way to animate. Let's lock away all of our layers so we don't get any annoying onion skinning from them. And let's find the point where we want the point of impact to be. So let's say maybe about here. Here is where we want the like glob of, of food to hit his mouth. Because that's where he just starts to drop back down again. So that makes sense. So what we're going to do is we're just going to literally draw in blop. Nice big blob like that. Okay. Going to hit K so that I can fill this guy in. And then hit B. And I'm just going to move in between back and forth between K and B like that. Just so that I can paint and fill and paint and fill. Nice and easy. Let's maybe scribble this guy in a bit more. Like so, and give it a bit more maybe of like a foodie trail. Maybe I can turn on pressure sensitivity so that we can uh, have some nice blobs blob coming out of this dude, like so. Okay. Now, pretty happy with that. I'm now going to move on a frame, find the point, like so. So, on our first and last keyframes, because we want this to loop endlessly, we want there to be absolutely nothing, okay? Um, so what I'm gonna do now is, first of all, I'm gonna animate on twos. And what that means is, um, most of the time, if, if an animation is 24 frames per second, you'll actually only see 12 drawings. So it's actually only 12 drawings per second. So that means that there'll be a drawing like this, and then there'll be a frame where it's the same, and then there'll be a new drawing, maybe like this, and then there'll be a frame where it's the same, and then a new drawing. Yeah, like so. So you can see where the phrase animating on twos comes because there's two frames per movement. Now that makes it look a little bit janky, but what it does mean is that you can speed it up if you wanted to in the faster moments when you needed more detail, you could add that detail in. What we're gonna do is cheat a little bit. We love cheating. We're gonna animate on twos, and then we're gonna shape tween between each one so that we don't have to animate everything all the time okay so let's going to go two frames before this one here and we're going to add a keyframe a blank one and then we're going to do the same like this all the way along okay all the way along all the way along all the way along all the way along which means we're going to have to clear this one like so okay awesome we have a point of impact which is great and now we just need to do this thing flying in so we're going to go back one like so and we can literally just draw this guy stretch him out like so give him a bit of a tail as if he's been just launched across the bloody page which he has Ow. and we'll fill it in in a minute because why not now I'm doing this one backwards because I like working from the point of impact because it helps give weight but you can do whatever the hell you like really doesn't really matter this bit's the fun bit Nice. So we're going to have him coming from off stage like that. Now, 
He's going to get open and it's going to fly across and then he's going to close it down. So this one we might just want to see a little bit of the remnants of it at the edge of his mouth. As well as some of the blobs coming out like so. Boom. Then this point is just going to be all crunchy blobs going everywhere. So we're going to have him like splat over like this. Yeah, like that. So, and now we can go back and we can just add in all sorts of other stuff. Big blomp here. A few specks of food everywhere else. Doesn't even really matter if it makes sense whether the blobs of food are there or not. It's a cartoony animation. Okay. In fact, what we could do is, let's leave it like that. Um, um, awesome. Okay. Um, um, okay, what we're going to do now is add in a new layer. Call this one neck. Put it underneath pretty much everything, in fact. And then we'll find the point of impact, which is going to be here. And we can hit F6, and we can grab his skin color. And we're just going to do like a little joke like bloop there's loads of food it's just like a splitch in his mouth like that okay move on to start to smoothen this out a little bit move on to smoothen it out a little bit move on to smoothen it out a little bit awesome let's grab these guys all of these frames Right click and choose create shape tween. You should get away with it. Well, you would have done if I'd actually painted in those layers, which I hadn't done yet. So let's do that now. Oops, that was my fault. Fill in that guy, not pink though. Let's fill him in green. Fill this guy in green. Green, green, green. Paint it in if there's not a gap, which we can do. That's because we weren't on a keyframe there. Sorry. There we go. Awesome. Nope. Cool. Grab these ones again. <laughs> and choose create shape tween. Um, 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 um. Boom. Boom. Looks good to me. Grab all these dudes. Create shape tween. Boom. Boom. F7 on that guy. Boom. Awesome. Looks pretty good. But we can see some weird goings on on these frames as it doesn't quite understand what to do. So we can fix that by just going to right click on all of these and choose convert to keyframes. Then we can remove the tween unless it's already done that. And now all of these have got their own individual frames on. So we can go through them and we can just paint those in. So one, two, like this. Um, like this. That one looks okay. This one needs to be really stretched out. That one looks okay. That one's less okay because it should have been moving on further. And then bam, like that. Looks good to me. Bob. Cool. Let's pop the loop on there. That looks pretty good, to be honest. And that took a lot less time than I thought it would. Um, obviously, you can uh, tweak this to your heart's content and um, convert to keyframes, remove tween, and do as much as you'd like with this. You, there's obviously more that could be done. Um, like, for example, I could neaten up this last little frame that looks complete rubbish. <laughs> but uh, honestly... This is like the fun bit. There's less rules. Um, if you're looking to do proper, proper animation, then obviously there's loads of rules that you should follow about squash and stretch and weight and mass and things like that. But for the sake of learning how to use this bit of software, I think this is just fine. Okay, so here we go. Boom, boom, boom. That was nice and easy. Let's see what he looks like on a loop. Yeah. 
pretty happy with that. That looks half decent. Okay, that looks pretty good. I'm actually pretty happy with that. Um, so the next thing, well, the last thing really is just to export it. Now this depends on where you're exporting it to. So I'll just briefly go over some of the options. Um, as we created this as a HTML5 canvas, if we just hit um, export by hitting control enter, what this will do is it will create a HTML page, a JavaScript page, everything like that. Everything that you need to actually display this on the web, it will give you each one of those files and then it will open up a browser window with your animation. Now it's important to note, as you can see here, any hidden layers will not remain hidden in your export. If we go back here, for example, we can see that our image layer on the background needs to be deleted. Then if we were to export that again, uh, again, takes a little while because it has to generate all this sort of JavaScript CSS that will be missing from the background. So um, if you go to your files where you've saved all of this information, if you just give me a second, I can bring that up. Um, you'll see what it's created in terms of um, file structure for this. This is called Monster Boy. We have a monsterboy.fla, which is the original file. You can think of that like the Photoshop file. There's then a Monster Boy HTML and a Monster Boy JavaScript file. If we open up this JavaScript file, maybe in Notepad++, you can see all sorts of crazy information that is making up our animation. Okay. Um, if you open up the HTML, that's what you've got here that you can see. Nice and easy. Different ways of exporting this are more traditional ways are actually exporting to an image or a movie. Okay, so if we export to a video, for example, you can just choose MOV, you can choose the size of your stage and you can just hit export. Um, cannot put it in that folder though because it doesn't exist anymore. So I'm just gonna put it on the desktop, just hit export. What that does is it will create a MOV by default and if you've got it set up to do so, it may also open up um, Media Encoder and automatically give you an option to convert it to MP4, like so, like it's happening in the background. Okay, and then you can convert that and that will give you an MP4 file as well as the MOV. It does this so that you can have both options. And if we watch this, there we go. There's our little monster boy doing a loop. Um, this obviously works better in a GIF, so you can export directly to GIF format if you wanted to as well export animated GIF, and you can do that directly from um, Flash. You can choose, for example, lossless. You can choose it to loop forever. You can choose the overall size uh, and all sorts of lovely stuff. Or art optimized, for example. And oh, there's our original one there. Look, um, Let's call monsterboy.gif. And we can go back to our files here. And there is monsterboy.gif animated away. And that's pretty much it. All the different options for exporting. So thank you very much for watching everybody. I really do appreciate it. I hope you've enjoyed this series. I hope I've included all the information that I needed to include. There's probably some stuff that I've missed, even though I've done it a second time around now. And if there is, feel free to shout and say mean things in the comments like you did last time. <laughs> no, all joking aside, I really do appreciate it. 99.99% .99 of you guys are lovely. Um, the other 0.01% can get stuffed as far as I'm concerned. Uh, <laughs> thanks very much for watching, everybody. I do appreciate it. And I'll see you all next time. Remember to subscribe for more tips, tricks and tutorials. Thanks for watching.